In this video, we're gonna work a shear wall design example. My name is Tyler Lay, and I make videos for freaks. Concrete freaks. I've got a previous video where I've worked through all the equations and described how to design a shear wall. We're gonna actually do an example problem now. We're gonna be looking at a short wall that has a 100 kips per floor. 100 kip, 100 kip, 100 kip coming down on top of the wall. You'd find that from the tributary area. It's got wind loads or lateral loads coming from the side here and your show, you can see the values. The wall is 20 foot long, it's 12 foot for each story, so it's 36 feet tall. The F prime C is 4,000. PSI, FY is 60 KSI, the width of the wall, the, the depth into the page is 12 inches. So we're going to do some structural analysis first. This is pretty straightforward stuff. We solve for what the moment is at the base. We take each one of the loads and multiply by their moment arm. We find the axial load at the base as well. We also find the shear. Now I'm going to do one of the calculation here. This is not that useful, but it just tell I I calculate this value H over B, the total height of the wall over the base of the wall. And if that number is less than two, then that usually means it is a shear dominated wall. If it's greater than two, it usually means it is a moment dominated wall. It just helps me get a better understanding of what I'm doing here. But let's jump into the shear first because this is such a short squatty wall. So we're going to design our transverse shear first. So we're going to take our VU, our 500 kips, divide it by 0.85. That is our fee factor when it comes to shear. And we get 588 kips. Now we have to calculate and find what our V sub C is. There are three equations to do this. I've shown you these in a previous video. Here are two of them all plugged in, all kinds of numbers plugged in here for the different values. And the first one I come up with 541 kips. This one I plug in, plug in, all these nasty numbers. The equations are on the uh, previous video. You can check them out. And we get 407 kips out of this one. Now we have to compare those two equations to root F prime C BWD, which is 291 kips. That isn't large enough to control. So we end up using 407 kips for our shear capacity of our concrete. Next, we have to figure out what our steel, our shear capacity of our steel needs to be. This is just like you would um, a beam in, in case uh, C or B. So we're gonna say VN over phi, that's that 588 kips, minus our V sub C, which is 407, means that we need 181 kips of shear capacity. Now I can get that by this equation here. Now I'm gonna solve for a, V over S. So I'm gonna move everything around here and figure out that I need 0.18 inches squared per foot. Now that is what I need for my shear capacity, but remember there is this AV minimum, this rho V minimum or AV minimum that I have to calculate. So I calculate it here, this 0 0.0025 times my S times my H, which comes out to be 0.36 inches squared per foot. This is going to control this requires more than this, the minimum controlled, I'm gonna supply no, number four bars at 12 inches. That would give me 0.4 inches squared per foot, and that is gonna be satisfactory. Now, I've already designed my horizontal steel. Now I have to do my longitudinal steel. The first thing I have to do is estimate my fee factor. So I take my axial load, which is 300 kips, divided by F prime C times my area gross. I get 0.026, and I do all of this to find my fee factor. This is my fee factor that I'm going to be using, and it's going to be less than 0.9. It's 0.84. Now I um, use that fee factor to figure out what I have to design for. This 1080 divided by 0.84 gives me... Um, what my moment is, and I put it in kip inches. Now I have to figure out how much steel I need. This is this equation where I've assumed it's 0.9. Um, this, a lot of things, I simplified it. Next, I'm going to find my longitudinal steel, the steel that goes up and down in my member. Um, and I'm gonna plug into this equation. This is a simplified from much, much larger equation, assuming a bunch of stuff is equal to 0.9. We're gonna check that assumption coming up. We're gonna get um, this, and then it's gonna simplify once we put it in per foot. This is how many total inches squared we need. And we're gonna divide by 20 feet, and we're going to get 1.2 inches squared per foot for our wall. So we're gonna try 
num um, two number seven bars. That happens to give me exactly 1.2 inches squared per foot. So I'm going to plug in for my um, my W here. I plug in my equation. I get 0.125. I plug in here for my alpha. I'm getting again using my phi factor. That's my phi factor we talked about before. This is my area of growth. So my F prime C. I get 0.031. I plug in for my C over L sub W. Again, equations on a previous video. And uh, I'm almost there. So I've been calculating all, all of this to plug into this equation. This is my phi factor. Here's my 0.5. Here's my area of steel over my length of my wall. Was, remember, it was 1.2 inches squared per foot times 20 feet. This is 60 KSI. Again, my L sub W length of my wall is 20 times 12. I plug in. These are all numbers that I found before. This is my phi factor again. This is my axial load. My area of steel again of over my wall times Fy. And this is this one minus C um, all over L sub W. So I get my moment here is 12,674 kip feet, which happens to be greater than 1080 kip feet. Yes, we're good. Now this is a, it's about a 17% over design. If I wanted to, I could try to ratio this down. So 14 inches may work, but I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna use 12 inches because that's what I needed for my horizontal steel, and I'm gonna use that same spacing for my vertical steel. Makes it kind of easy to lay out. Um, so I, I do have to do check my rho v minimum, and it was 0.36 inches squared per foot, and 1.2 inches squared is gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be great. So I'm. this is what my layout's gonna be. Hey, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and of course, Leave me any comments or questions you have below. Take care, everybody. This has been fun. Bye.